The year was 1995. Godzilla's fiery reign was about to come to an even more fiery end, as he was to meet his demise in Godzilla vs. Destroya. That's actually how they marketed the movie, as Godzilla dies. Naturally, with this impending death looming over one of their most beloved and lucrative characters, the Toho Company wanted to, uh, celebrate Godzilla's passing. With some merch, like normal people. So they made the merch, and the merch looked a little something like this. To the uninitiated, this glaringly bright and simply beautiful slab of soft vinyl is the Meltdown theater-exclusive Godzilla by Bandai, released in 1995 and through early 1996 in commemoration of Godzilla's death in the final Heisei film. Although some claims assert that there are only 5,000 of these figures in the world, rumors estimate there are likely around 15,000 because Bandai likes to oversaturate the market. Love ya, Bandai. Some of the confusion involves differentiating between the literal theater-exclusive releases and the mail-order alternative from the Godzilla vs. Destroyer program book. The version of this figure with a white sticker, like so, was sold directly from the movie theater in promotion of the film. That same figure that lacks this white sticker is still considered a theater exclusive because it is the exact same mold, color, and model, but it was just made available through the mail for those who couldn't snag one from their local cinema. My version is the mail order version. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm ready to check the specs on this guy. Let's go! Theater exclusive Burning Godzilla stands at 9 inches tall and is cast in a semi-translucent soft orange vinyl with a deep red overlay, not unlike a bad sunburn. His eyes are orange and mostly featureless, and his teeth are painted white. The rest of him radiates levels of brightness and charisma no Geiger counter could hope to measure. The figure is solidly built with five points of articulation, with those being the arms, legs, and a 360-degree swivel in the head. For a simple-seeming figure like this at first glance, a closer look reveals faithful skin texture, dorsal spine and neck ridge details, defined brow bones, and delicately crafted ears. Among other little nice touches, such as the precise formation of and etches in the face and lips, gotta love those nasolabial folds. Getting into the hands, talons, and mouth shows where that finer detail ends and blurs into more general shapes, per the Bandai usual. The neck is also a bit fat. From the side, the jaw's kind of thick and blocky like a Lego, but when you're already this beautiful, you can't hope to win them all. Despite his apparent moon face, this theater-exclusive Burning Godzilla is really lovely and well worth his attention. My favorite thing about this figure is that even though he is burning hot, 1200 degrees Celsius to be exact, he's also really cool. Wow, that heat and light is intense. I do recommend sunglasses. Please, people, protect your retinas. They'll thank you later. I got this figure the other day in Akihabara at Golden Age Toys, a popular spot for picking up otaku items. And with me, of course, was Jeremy Mani, Tokyo Toy Bastard, who was there to subliminally encourage me to buy it with the awesome Desugoji on his Godzilla store bag, so I'm gonna blame him for this purchase. As many of you know, I'm not really an avid toy collector, but sometimes there are certain pieces that really speak to me, and I love the history behind this one. Godzilla vs. Destroya is one of my all-time favorite movies ever, and definitely in the top three for all Godzilla films. And, you know, when you're in Akihabara, and you're about to leave the country, and you need a little souvenir gift for yourself, do as your fellow Goji geeks do. That's all I've got for you today, folks. Thank you for watching, and I hope it was a smashing good time. <laughs> May the geek be with you, and take care. Bye.